All right, so let's talk about how we're going to make leukotrienes and prostaglandins from arachidonic acid. So let's go over the mechanism of how we're going to form arachidonic acid and then what leukotrienes we're going to form and what prostaglandins we're going to form, what cells are going to make them and what they're going to do. So let's just start really basic. So at the very beginning, you'll have a membrane phospholipid as your cell membrane. And if you ever have any membrane damage, you can have calcium enter the cell. So we're gonna have increased calcium into the cell because we'll pretend we have some sort of membrane damage. And what that's gonna do is it's actually going to activate this enzyme called PLA2. So PLA2 is phospholipase A2, and that's gonna become active when we have any membrane damage. And so PLA2 is going to take your membrane phospholipid and it's going to convert it into either arachidonic acid or something called platelet activating factor. So one path here will have PAF, which is platelet activating factor. We're not going to talk about that one right now. But the other pathway is this arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is going to have two fates depending on what enzyme it's in it's working with and what cell it's in and that will determine which one of these two pathways is going to predominate. So the first pathway can be the formation of leukotrienes, so leukotrienes. And then the second pathway is prostaglandins, so prostaglandins. And what we're going to call any metabolite that's made by arachidonic acid, we're going to call it in icosanoid. So these two together, the general umbrella term is icosanoid. I, icosanoid? Icosanoid. Okay, so let's talk about what enzymes are actually going to help play a role in converting arachidonic acid into our icosanoids. So for leukotrienes, we're going to have this enzyme called 5-lipooxygenase, or 5-lipoxygenase. I call it 5-lipooxygenase, even though it's spelled 5-lipoxygenase. And so 5-lipooxygenase is going to convert arachidonic acid into leukotrienes. And this is a dominant pathway in cells like neutrophils. So we can put neutrophils under here. So you're going to have this pathway predominate. Now, on the other hand, we'll have a different enzyme called cyclooxygenase. So cyclooxygenase, this is often abbreviated as COX. So your COX enzyme is going to convert your arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. So this is just generally what's going to happen. So let's go a little bit more in depth and see how we're going to form leukotrienes and what leukotrienes we're actually going to form from arachidonic acid. Okay, so we'll start from the very top. So we have arachidonic acid up here. Arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid. And it's going to be converted into the first leukotriene. And that's going to be leukotriene A4. So from now on, I'm going to abbreviate leukotriene as LT. So LTA4 is going to be your first leukotriene. And remember, this enzyme that's going to do that is 5-lipoxygenase, 5-lipoxygenase. And so once we have leukotriene A4, we are going to be able to form different types of leukotrienes from this. So we can go through one pathway here that's going to form leukotriene B4. Or we can go through this other pathway that's going to form leukotriene C4, D4, and E4. And so what we're going to see is that we're going to have leukotriene B4 formation in neutrophils and macrophages. So we're going to have this in neutrophils and macrophages. And LTB4 is going to be a chemoattractant or chemotaxant. And LTC4, D4, and E4 are mainly going to be made in mast cells, macrophages, and basophils. 
So neutrophils and macrophages or LTB4 is usually a little bit easier to remember because neutrophils and macrophages are associated with uh, the acute inflammation response. And then mast cells, macrophages, and basophils, I think this might be a little bit trickier to remember, but you can have like an acronym like MMB or BMM, there's some sort of way to try to remember that you're going to have mast cells, macrophages, and basophils. I guess it's easy to remember that macrophages will be common in both, but um, just remember that mast cells and basophils are going to be producing these other leukotrienes. And so, like I said, that these leukotrienes are going to have different functions. So LTB4 is going to function as um, a, a chemoattractant or in leukocyte chemotaxis. So this is main function is going to be leukocyte chemotaxis. And that's going to be its basic only function. On the other hand, LT, C4, D4, and E4 are going to have three different functions. Um, so their functions are going to be increased vascular permeability. increase vascular permeability, it's going to increase vasoconstriction, but later on in inflammation. So vasoconstriction, this is late. And then bronchospasm. Bronchospasm. So these functions are going to commonly be seen in something called anaphylaxis, specifically slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis, which is abbreviated as SRS. A. So slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis. So let's just quickly review what is happening with these leukotrienes because there is a lot going on. And so basically what we're going to have happen is we're going to have arachidonic acid over here. It's going to be broken down into LTA4 here by an enzyme called 5-lipoxygenase. And then LTA4 can either be broken down into LTB4, which is going to be predominantly in neutrophils and macrophages, or LTC4, D4, E4, which is going to be predominantly in mast cells, macrophages, and basophils. So when we think about what cells are actually creating leukotrienes, it's mainly going to be neutrophils, mast cells, and macrophages. And that's mainly because basophils are not that much in the circulation anyway. So we're really just going to have neutrophils, mast cells, and macrophages that are going to be forming these leukotrienes. And then LTB4, its only function is going to be as is only its only function is going to be in leukocyte chemotaxis. Whereas the LTC4 through E4 are going to increase vascular permeability, increase vasoconstriction later on, and then increase bronchospasm. And this is mainly seen in anaphylaxis. So they're slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis. So if you just remember that leukotriene C4 to E4 are associated with anaphylaxis, I think that's usually okay. Okay, so this is what's happening when we go through leukotrienes. So we said up here that arachidonic acid can go through leukotrienes here. But now we need to go through prostaglandins and see what prostaglandins are going to be formed. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, we'll just break it down really quickly. So we have arachidonic acid at the top, arachidonic acid here. And then it's going to be broken down into something called prostaglandin H2. And for now, I'm just going to abbreviate prostaglandin as PG. So PGH2. And remember, the enzyme we said that was going to do this is called cyclooxygenase or COX. So then PGH2 is kind of like uh, leukotriene A4 in that it's going to give rise to a whole bunch of different prostaglandins. So it's going to have basically five different prostaglandins that we're going to talk about. So the first one will be PGI2, then we'll have TXA2, then we'll have PGE2, then we'll have PGF2-alpha, and then PGD2. So it's a lot of these PGs and then random letters after them. 
So let's go ahead and draw arrows to all of these because these are all the different prostaglandins, or I should be more general and say prostanoids, that are going to be formed from PGH2. And the cell type, again, is going to kind of dictate which one of these prostaglandins is going to be formed. So let's take a look at PGI2 first. So this is also known as prostacycline. So PGI2 and TXA2 are probably the two most important ones. Uh, PGE2, I think, also to a lesser extent, but we're really going to focus on I2 and TXA2. So prostacycline, this is going to be in the endothelium, while TXA2 is mainly going to be in platelets. And we're kind of going to separate these from the rest because these are the only two that are going to actually have effects on platelets, while the other three are not really going to affect platelets. So PGE2, we're going to see in neutrophils and macrophages. So these are going to be seen in acute inflammation. Right. And then we have PGF2 alpha, which is just going to be macrophages. And then we're going to see PGD2, which is going to be mast cells. So you can notice kind of a trend between the prostaglandin production and the leukotriene production that we have the same basic cells are kind of contributing to both. Uh, neutrophils, macrophages, mast cells, right? They're pretty common between leukotrienes that we saw up here and then now these prostaglandins that we see down here. So let's talk about what the function of each of these prostaglandins is going to be. So remember, we said PGI2 and TXA2, we separated them from the other three because they are actually going to affect platelets. So let's start with PGI2, also known as prostacycline. So this is going to... Um, its effect is going to be vasodilation. So vasodilation. It's going to inhibit platelets. And then it's going to increase vascular permeability. Whereas thromboxane A2, TXA2 is going to do vasoconstriction so remember, this is being released by platelets, so it makes sense that they would release something that would encourage vasoconstriction because you don't want a whole bunch of blood going to um, your site of injury. And then you're going to have platelet activation. So activate platelets. And then it's not going to affect vascular permeability. So basically, what the whole point of thromboxane A2, TXA2, is to decrease blood loss, while prostacycline's main goal is to increase blood flow in your arteries and your arterioles. And then these other three prostaglandins, generally, when we're going to have injury, are going to do vasodilation and increase vascular permeability as well. So very similar to PGI2, but they're not going to have any effects on platelets. They're not going to activate or inhibit any platelets. And that's going to be the um, basic functions of those prostaglandins. Okay, so those are the basic functions of the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes. And another video will go more in depth into specifically talking about PGE2 here and what its effects are and then the different types of COX enzymes that we have, COX1 and COX2 and how those work.